Hi everyone, Sad the Knee Face Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I don't know, I just have a hard time justifying any kind of excitement for a mixtape like this. A, a guy who has a mid to high level of technical ability, not a whole lot in terms of an original sound, obviously ripping off ideas left and right from his contemporaries, not a whole lot in the way of focused song ideas or themes or concepts, not a whole lot in terms of quotable one-liners or jokes or bits of wordplay, and yet he has amassed this audience that just seems addicted to his mediocrity. In a way, I guess you gotta give it to the guy because he's supremely good at taking better hip-hop, pulling anything subversive out of it, and refining it down for audiences that don't have the framework to understand why he's at a far lower creative tier than his contemporaries who he blatantly rips off. This thing is 14 tracks, well over an hour, much longer than I would want to be listening to a Logic album. The lyrics on this album are insipid, they're trite, they're disgusting, they're straight trash. It's like Logic can't do anything other than use his music to either boast or turn his tracks into these pseudo-woke generic advice columns. Pretty much every project he's dropped up until this point has at least a handful of songs that ride uh, with the coattails of Drake or J. Cole or Kendrick. And there's even a track off this new record where he has a flow and an inflection that feels like he's doing his best JIT impression. Like if all these artists stop putting out music tomorrow, what would Logic do? Logic has directly ripped Kendrick off on numerous tracks. So how can you even say that he's more influential than Kendrick when he's copying the dude? Come on, come on. There is a point in the instrumental where you get some metallic pieces of percussion and some call and response vocal samples that, that sound like they're straight out of Kendrick's DNA. Bass line that seems uh, heavily influenced by the Shireen intro from Good Kid Mad City. Intermission on here is so smooth, jazzy, and neo-soul inspired, it doesn't sound too far off from something from To Pimp a Butterfly. Why does the song I'm Gone sound like a Good Kid Mad City leftover? Right down to the flow. And the song Never Enough sounds like it was written directly after listening to Hole Up off of Section 80. This whole album is a ripoff of all of the Kendrick album, and every song sounds like Kendrick's flow because Kendrick is the best Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick. I can't help but feel like his style is just a composite of his contemporaries, who he is just a little too eager to follow in the footsteps of, most notably Kendrick Lamar. How can you say he sounds like Kendrick? How can you say he sounds like Cole? How could you say he sounds like this guy? Despite the fact that on this track, he literally admits to and says, hey, I just like grab my ideas from these other artists who are my contemporaries. Logic is kind of uh, looking down on his haters and saying, hey, can these people even rap? Shit. And then he essentially goes into his fastest flow on the entire song, where he begins rapping so fast that his words kind of bleed and blur together and his articulation is off and it just sounds like a total, I don't know, mess of crap. Multiple tracks on this album feature Logic endlessly complaining about how people online don't like him. It's essentially Russ 2.0. When you dive deeply into what he's saying, there's not a lot of substance there. There's not a lot of thought being put into why he's taking certain positions or why he thinks X, Y, or Z is happening. Logic trying his hand at acoustic balladry, indie pop, alternative rock, all of his attempts of which turn out pretty awful. Oh yeah, bro. I'm a big Logic fan, but even that album to me, big cringe. And there are points on here where he brings up the biracial thing as if he's just trying to trigger those haters. Oh, they go crazy when he says he's biracial, so I'm gonna say it. Oh, the mad lad, he did it, I can't believe it. The singing that he delivers on the track every day, w with production from Marshmello on that track, uh, w which is like almost as bad as Jake Paul's every day, bro. The, the singing on that track is awful. The singing on the song Overnight is, is virtually unlistenable. And this album here is kind of like the hip hop equivalent to a self-help speech. Logic decides that he is going to write pop rock songs and acoustic rock songs and indie rock songs. Yes, that is literally what he is doing on this album. In a way, it's kind of like his uh, speeding bullet to heaven. It's like a political album written by somebody who doesn't follow politics all that closely to begin with. Seems Logic thinks his success has nothing to do with his delivery of bland, inoffensive hip-hop for suburbanites who think caring about real rap 
means that you listen to someone who raps fast. Also, the chord progression on this thing and the way the strings just sort of rush in in the second leg of the track, like, wh what do you think, this is a Pixie song? Get the hell out of my face! He critiques himself afterwards saying, oh, do I sound like shit? It doesn't even matter because I'm killing this shit. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like it kind of does matter. It doesn't sound all that great uh, at this moment in the song and, and maybe just do better in the future, I suppose. He reeks of his contemporaries. Putting g Easy and Logic on a track together seems to be the musical equivalent of taking a slice of Wonder Bread, putting another slice of Wonder Bread on top, and just biting in. Logic's approach to Boom Bap is kind of squeaky clean. It's a neutered and toothless take on this classic East Coast style. Lemon Drop uh, not only features the stomach-churning lyrics of, um, Oh God, I, I can't say it. How many licks to lick your lemon drop? How many licks to lick your drop drop? Uh, ah, ah, ah. The lyrics on this album get downright awful when he's spitting about wanting to be bipolar because Kanye's bipolar. Falsely thinking that maybe if I guess he had some sort of chemical imbalance, he'd be creative too. There's also the, uh, the line on here about him having a biracial penis. There are quite a few bars on this thing. I would much rather just like to forget as soon as possible. Logic put effort into everything aside from making his own style, his own lyrics, his own voice. It's got a decent instrumental. It has an okay flow, but do not be fooled, everyone, okay? This is, um, th this is a bad corny PSA masquerading as, um, uh, a rap song, okay? That's, that's actually what what it is. I guess another thing I could give this project is that the features generally are pretty good, although I can't tell 100% of the time if that's because they're truly great or if I'm just happy to be hearing somebody else other than Logic on the microphone. Logic's own father appears at the very end of the song Bobby where he just rants and raves about Logic's naysayers and his haters and so on and so forth. He literally brought his dad onto his record to stand up for him. He's about as much a fan of hip hop as he is a participator in it. Maybe even a little bit more of a fan. I'm not really feeling that competitive spirit on this record. I'm feeling like this is popping, so I'm gonna do this. I hope Mac DeMarco got a big fat check out of uh, taking part in this awful Logic album and allowing Logic to do bad Mac DeMarco karaoke. Out of all the albums that rappers have recently released where they kind of felt like they needed to come out with a political record in light of the election of Donald Trump, um, I don't know, I feel like Logic so far comes up the shortest. Once again, Logic is just Xeroxing whatever seems to be trending in the rap world that is just kind of caught his ear. For whatever reason, Logic just seems really, really focused on uh, on Travis Scott right now. There are a few tracks that just sound like blatant Travis Scott ripoffs. These bitter, annoying, gross tracks that see Logic portraying himself as, you know, just like dunking on his haters and so on and so forth, but it's painfully apparent to anybody else listening outside that, wow, this like, really gets to you, dude. I'm serious. Talk to someone who has some kind of emotional investment in you and unpack this stuff. He's trying to create this like fake natural feel when, I mean, the album doesn't really need that. And then toward the end of the track, there's an even faker, horrible stock children cheering sound laid into the instrumental. And these two things just make the song feel incredibly corny. It's a horrible start to this record. It's like listening to the rapt synopsis of the most intense action scene at the end of a bad blockbuster film. There's a car chase and there's police and there's gunfire and the car flips and his friend gets shot. His wife was abducted, he, he gets back to her and, and then he was the one who abducted her the whole time. Oh my God, what a twist. What? what? Horrible twist. The mix of sources logic is so obviously ripping off on this record, to me displays just a, a very basic and bland view of rock music. Like, if you're gonna make a sudden transition into this genre, and the first artists you're going to pull inspiration from are, like, the Pixies, Radiohead, Mac DeMarco, <laughs> and Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's, um... Let me try to put it this way. If Jack White came out with a hip hop album tomorrow and it basically just sounded like all he listened to was uh, Biggie and Jay-Z, 
yeah, that'd be pretty funny. And we would not be laughing with Jack White, we would be laughing at him. He's on his Eminem shit, and not even like good, hardcore, old school Eminem, uh, which was just funny and goofy and off the wall and charismatic and, and over the top. Uh, this is more like late era, get a really uh, cleaned, groomed up singer. Uh, on the hook and just have it sound as radio friendly as possible. Eminem, uh, it's kind of tragic, unfortunately. This is not a Macklemore album. This is not an Eminem album. This is the, the last thing I want to hear. This is glitzy to the max and it gives me a headache. Being that every man that you wanted to root for, even if his music was just okay, that was what was essentially keeping me in Logic's corner up until this point. But now that that attitude's just gone now. He just seems way too focused and obsessed and butthurt over irrelevant crap. And I, I don't know what to say. It's just really obnoxious that Logic is at a point now where it's like everything needs to be urgent, needs to be a PSA, needs to be like, you have to hear this. You have to take in the message that I'm giving you because it's important. I would, I would have not liked it if we were sitting here and we were talking like, uh, uh, I don't know, this was four years ago, three, four years ago, this is three, four years ago, and I saw logic on this list, I would say, okay, no, no, that is not fair. No, 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 no. But after logic's two latest projects, this is fine. I am okay with this. Oh, I mean, this album, logic really tries to make an album about everything, but he just fails to make a poignant observation about much of anything. At the end of the day, like all you're really selling your fans on is this really, um, I don't know, corny, uh, one-dimensional motivational poster. So disgusting corny lyrics, blatant ripoffs, annoying stories and narratives, flat, bland, run-of-the-mill, bore- I'm just tired of this. I'm just tired. This was obnoxious. This was awful. And what's even more terrible is that it was unlikable. It was, it was sad. We are in truly sad times right now. This is the wrong timeline. I'm not really sure if I have anything else to say about this project other than that, but goddamn, uh, Logic really outdid himself this time. Logic's worst rap album, again, by a very large margin. I am going to leave it at that. This Logic project, it's not good. Honestly, I want to congratulate Logic. I want to congratulate him on fatherhood. I want to congratulate him on taking that bull by the horns and deciding to uh, directly involve himself in that to the degree that he feels like he needs to to be a good dad. Again, big responsibility, huge life change. Yes, I was not crazy about A to Z and there were some songs that I thought were a little underwhelming, but No Pressure is still packed with admirable songs, flows, performances, witty writing, quite a few personal revelations as well. I can't help but be kind of happy for the guy, you know? Feeling a decent too strong seven on this one. That's why I do low, I'm gonna be honest, like I fuck with Fontano. I know some of my homies be like, yo, that do be extra as fuck, but like, He's, you know, he's an honest guy and I don't ever give a fuck because I just make my music from, from my heart or whatever. But that dude, he lives that shit. And when it comes to, to like journalists or, or critics or whatever, if you went to school and you took the time or if you made it your entire life and took the time, you deserve that voice. Oh.